Hey everyone welcome back to TechHead. If you have not yet subscribed please click the subscriber button. Today let's get to know about some of the common MAMS fabrication techniques. To begin with, let's understand what is MAMS fabrication. MAMS fabrication is a technique that uses semiconductor manufacturing processes such as iron etching, diffusion, oxidation, sputtering, etc., in combination with specialized micromachining techniques. This machining occurs in the range of 1 to 100 micrometers in size, where both the mechanical parts and the electronics that control them, are built in the same piece of silicon. MEMS fabrication consists in the application of the following steps, normally several times during the manufacturing. The process starts with a polished silicon, the substrate wafer that undergoes these steps such as thin film growth, or deposition, doping, lithography and etching and micromachining. Deposition in MEMS technique, refers to deposition of thin films of material, onto the substrate, and has a thickness, ranging from few nanometers to 100 micrometers. MEMS deposition can be broadly classified into physical vapor deposition, PVD, and chemical vapor deposition, CVD. PVD can be further classified into evaporation PVD and sputtering PVD. CVD is classified into atmospheric pressure CVD, low pressure CVD, and plasma enhanced CVD. Evaporation PVD system consists of a high vacuum chamber with a crucible containing an evaporant to be deposited that is heated by reactive, inductive, or by electron beam heating techniques. The component to be coated is supported within the chamber. The system may also have shutter systems to control deposition. Sputtering PVD employs plasma, formed by large voltage in low pressure across closely spaced electron pair. The target material at cathode, is bombarded by energetic ions, from an inert gas. The sputtered target atoms are deposited onto the substrate. Sputtered atoms have higher mobility, and hence, better step coverage. Gases with higher atomic number is preferred, hence argon is the frequently used sputtering gas. Sputtering doesn't depend on substrate temperature, though higher temperature is preferred because it can improve adhesion, and prevent film cracking. CVD is used to deposit, non-volatile solid film on substrate, by reaction of a vapor phase chemical. The desired gases are introduced into the chamber, at high temperature and low pressure, the gases move over the substrate, and the substrate adsorbs reactants onto its surface. The film is formed by, surface reactions such as, decomposition and surface mitigation. The byproducts is then desorbed and removed from the chamber, by forced convection. Lithography, is one of the most common semiconductor and MIMS fabrication technique process. It is the process of, transferring desired shapes on a photo mask, to a thin layer of photoresistive material, commonly PMMA or Novolac, over the surface of the silicon wafer or substrate. Optical lithography is most widely used, but for submicron resolution, e-beam lithography, x-ray lithography, ion beam lithography etc. are employed, and the most popular light source for photolithography is, high-pressure mercury arc lamp. Photolithography is broadly categorized, according to the basic exposure method into three, namely contact printing, proximity printing and, projection printing. Contact printing has high resolution, but damages both the mask and resist layer, as they are in contact. Proximity printing was adopted, to eliminate the damage done due to contact between mask and resist layer, but resulted in lower resolution, due to diffraction. Projection printing evolved to accomplish high resolution, and eliminate damage due to contact between mask and resist layer. Steps in photolithography. Wafer substrate such as silicon wafer, is cleaned chemically, to remove any organic ionic or metallic impurities. Deposition of barrier layer, onto surface of wafer such as SiO2. Adhesion promoter, and photoresist, applied by spin coating, to form uniform thin layers. The coated wafer is pre-baked at about 100 degrees Celsius. Photo mask aligned over substrate, and is exposed to UV light. Then the substrate is placed in developer to remove soluble area and post-baked at 120 degrees Celsius. 
pattern formed on photoresist is followed by either dry or wet etching of exposed barrier layer. The resist is finally stripped off using solvent. Bulk micro machining. Here, bulk material of substrate are selectively removed in the fabrication of micro mechanical structures. Depending on the etchant used, it is classified into wet etching, that is use of chemical solution, and dry etching, that is use of gas phase etchants in plasma. Bulk micro machining can be classified into anisotropic or isotropic, depending on direction of etching of the layer. Isotropic etchants, etch the material irrespective of direction. While anisotropic etchants, etch faster in one direction than the other. Surface micro machining. In surface micro machining, microstructures are fabricated using deposited structural and sacrificial layers on substrate. Steps can be summarized as sacrificial layer deposited on substrate and patterned, structural layer deposited over sacrificial layer and patterned. Sacrificial layer is removed by etchant to form freestanding microstructures. Wet etching. Here, the wafer is immersed in chemicals and the exposed areas are etched and washed away. Wet etching process involves chemical reaction to etch the material and produce water-soluble byproducts. Dry etching. It employs use of gas phase etchants in plasma to avoid undercutting and achieve ultra-large scale integration. Dry etching is also called plasma etching and can be classified into physical, which is unselective, and chemical based, which is isotropic. Dry etching is characterized as anisotropic in nature, have high resolution, less undercutting, better process control, and less use of chemicals. The basic steps in the process are etchant species or reactants are generated in plasma and then adsorbed on wafer surface. Surface chemical reaction takes place on surface to facilitate etching. Volatile byproducts desorbed, diffused, and pumped out after etching. Reactive ion etching, RIE, is a good compromise between anisotropy and selectivity. SF6 gas is used to etch silicon. The gas flows through a vacuum chamber, which is applied with RF voltage across two electrodes, that facilitates some of the gases to get ionized, generating plasma. Wafer held on RF powered cathode, while the ground chamber acts as anode, the RF voltage accelerates electrons to high kinetic energy, and these high energy electrons etch the substrate. Deep reactive ion etching, D, R, I, E is employed to achieve high aspect ratio structures, and deep groove with vertical side walls. By high density plasma based dry etching, the D R I E works similar to R I E, except that, a protective layer is deposited between etching to achieve higher aspect ratio. Most commonly used deposition of protective layer on side walls are by polymerization between etching process. LIGA, a German acronym for lithography, galvanoformung, abformung. This process is used to create high aspect ratio structures using X-rays or relatively low aspect ratio structures using UV rays. The steps involves Deposition of thick resist layer, PMMA, onto metal surface. PMMA is then exposed to masked X rays and developed, followed by metal electro deposition onto primary substrate. PMMA is then removed to expose freestanding structure. Finally, plastic injection molding takes place and repeated. If you have found the video useful, please do give us a thumbs up. Thank you.